My name is Mati Khairum, born and raised in Holland with a great deal of Indonesian culture and upbringing, thanks to my Indonesian parents who migrated to Holland in the 70s. I have been a caretaker for my beloved late mother for more than 10 years. She was diagnosed with vascular dementia. By being engaged with Alzinet, my mission is to share and support our fellow community regarding Alzheimer. I would like to thank the organization to have trusted me in being the moderator for today's session. Now, since this is our first Alzi online session of the year, I would like to ask Amalia Funk Utomo, our chairwoman of Alzi Nederland, to present her welcome speech of the year. But Amalia, the Zoom floor is yours. Thank you, passing up the screen to me. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everywhere. Good morning in Netherlands. Um, thank you very much and welcome to our first webinars in 2022. And thank you very much on behalf of Alzheimer's Indonesia Netherlands team here. Um, thank you for our speakers, uh, Leon, Lotte, uh, to share the knowledge because our um, vision and mission this year is to bring more of the Netherlands knowledge to Indonesia. And hopefully through these webinars and also other activities, we can improve the quality of living. People with dementia, uh, with Indonesian background in Indonesia and everywhere around the world. And um, also thank you, um, Wati, for being our moderators. And hopefully there's a lot more in diaspora and in Indonesia, wherever, and especially in the Netherlands to support um, our activities and um, I can see here's people from Indonesia. Thank you Alzheimer's Indonesia and our uh, fellow from chapter managers and also caregivers. I see some caregivers here in the, in the participant. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, it is part of our commitment on our twinning program in Alzheimer's Indonesia, Alzheimer's Indonesia Netherlands. So it is twinning program between Alzheimer's Indonesia and Alzheimer's Netherlands and also the Ministry of Health of the Netherlands to transfer knowledge to bringing uh, advocacy and bring uh, uh, capacity building to Indonesia to improve the quality of living people with dementia, caregivers and also of the families. It's not just a social culture, but also science. And um, yeah, and the, today's topic, it's really interesting because lifestyle, everybody has lifestyle. It's a really daily. Sometimes you are take it really easy on lifestyle, but actually it's your habit. And I believe during this last two years of pandemic, there's a lot of new habits and becoming new rituals for us to for the future. So this today's topic is really interesting and really looking forward. So Everybody's enjoy the sessions and um, hopefully we'll see you more in the next of our activity. Back to you, Wati. Thank you so much, Mamalia. And yeah, I'm, I agree with you. This uh, topic is actually to give a boost for our new year's resolution. So before we start with the main program, we would like to invite you all for the brain gym. But uh, also something important, I think that Manik uh, will make a group photo to capture this moment, this, um, to memorize uh, this day. So we would like to ask everybody to participate. Uh, for those who haven't opened their uh, video, please turn on uh, their video. And don't forget, give your best smile. Yeah, Mama I got the picture. So please open uh, your video and uh, give the big smile of you. Uh, I will wait for a couple seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I will start to make a photo. One, two, three. Uh, once more. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> it feels a bit awkward, but I think uh, it has been captured in a very nice uh, picture. But Manik, are you going to start the video? Oh.
patience everybody yeah now i will start the, the video we will together uh do the brain gym Quite hard, this. So. <laughs> concentrate very difficult for me and but I see at least a lot of big smiles uh, within you so that's a good uh, not only to be fit but also to be happy right uh, people okay great thank you all okay let's proceed the theme of today's session is dementia prevention and lifestyle in this session, we would like to share knowledge on how we can prevent dementia and which lifestyle can support this. Firstly, we would like to hear directly from Herawasi Hiasandi Kusuma, or Bawasi in short, a member of Alzheimer Indonesia in Geneva, Switzerland. How does she do it? How does she live her life a healthy life? But Wasi, are you there to share? Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Hello, Aussie friends. Uh, 
as uh, Kaamalia said, good morning, afternoon, evening. I see some uh, familiar faces here or names. Um, thank you. Um, yes, I'm a member of uh, Alzheimer Indonesia living in Geneva, Switzerland. I've been living here for many years uh, since end of 76. Um, I have two daughters um, and of course a husband, Indonesian too. So we're part of diaspora here in Switzerland. Um, parents uh, went back uh, to Indonesia with the family and I uh, decided to stay here. So, um, and I'm glad to uh, share a little bit of my uh, uh, lifestyle with you all. And um, thank you, uh, Azamer uh, Netherlands for letting me uh, uh, share um, a little bit of my uh, uh, lifestyle, how I try to do it. And uh, thank you, Kawati, for introducing me very uh, nicely. Um, so I have a little bit of uh, notes here. Um, uh, I, I was told that I have three to five minutes before um, the main uh, program starts, so I better get so I better get going <laughs> before I run out of time. Um, but first, before I uh, start, maybe we want to ask ourselves, what is a healthy lifestyle? Um, maybe each one of us uh, doesn't see it in the same way. Um, for me, uh, I think a he healthy lifestyle, my healthy lifestyle, is um, knowing to, to, to uh, look after my well-being physically and mentally. Um, now, it's, uh, it's not always easy for me, um, and sometimes I have to discipline myself, but that's life. We try to do our best, right? Um, so let me start with, uh, uh, with a few points. Um, maybe I'll start when I was a, was a little girl. So when I was a little girl, um, I used to travel a lot because of my, uh, for my uh, late uh, father's profession. And so uh, me and my family, we followed him everywhere he was posted. And then um, during my adulthood, I continued traveling with uh, my own family, friends, and for work as well. Um, so I realized, and, and I do feel that traveling is one of the ways to uh, release stress. Because when I travel, um, I see uh, uh, new things and I experience new things from different places. And that's very good for my well-being. Um, again, when I was a little girl, uh, my mother taught me how to do uh, embroidering and uh, tapestry, and I loved it very much. Um, uh, that is also something uh, in related to creation. Um, and, then I, and then I got married and had two daughters. Um, my eldest daughter dragged me at one point to take uh, painting lessons with her when she was small. Um, and so I went and, and did painting and I never knew that I was going to paint. You know, I, I cannot draw. Um, and today I cannot thank uh, more my uh, daughter because ever since that time, I never actually left painting behind. I would paint anything and I loved it. And um, I had the feeling that I needed to create more and more um, because it soothes my head and 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 it can also uh, release stress in a in a way. Um, now, uh, what else? Um, and yeah, and how about regular exercise? Now, I must admit that I don't do much sports. I don't do much exercise. But what I do is I walk regularly. And when I walk, I walk fast to sort of burn, you know, keep up my metabolism, though I do have a quick metabolism without uh, doing anything. But um, yeah, so I do walk a lot and uh, regularly and very fast. And that compensates the, the sport that I don't do. Um, and then eating, yes, eating. Eating is a little bit of challenge for me because I try to eat to um, have a regular uh, a balanced diet. Uh, but the thing is, I love sweets. I love eating sweets a lot, but that's not very good, of course, uh, for uh, my health. So I try to limit eating the sweets. And I do eat a healthy f uh, fruit too, like avocado or, um, or any fruit, red fruit um, I love. And I try to eat less oily food. Um, okay, resting, resting. 
Now, my friends tell me that I don't rest enough. That's true. Um, but the fact is, for me, resting is um, being active, doing whatever I like, uh, doing it alone or with, with friends. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, it, it, it depends on me. If, if I sit down and don't do anything, you know, it's like, oh, I'm missing something. But I also uh, like watching movies. Don't get me wrong. OK, that's part of my leisure time. And I, and, I, and I like watching thrillers because uh, it makes me uh, have to think who's the bad guy. You know, it's sort of intriguing. Um, but I also like uh, watching documentaries. Um, and my favorite uh, documentaries on uh, animal, how animals live. It's amazing that um, how much we can uh, learn and, and, and see how animals live, um, the way they live healthy. Um, in a way, their lifestyle uh, in quotes. So that's about uh, my resting. Um, what else? Uh, I'm just going scrolling down here uh, of my notes here. Uh, oh yes, and then how about spirituality? Um, I don't, I don't uh, practice um, a lot of uh, spiritual activities, but. I do believe in the law of attraction. Yes, believe it or not, I do believe on uh, the law of attraction. Um, the thing is with the law of attraction, it helps me to concentrate on, on something and then uh, work towards uh, to get what I want. And that's, that stimulates my, my way of, of my brain and my subconscious um, to work together and, and to do things rightly. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't always work, but I try hard and, and it stimulates my brain and I think it's good. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, uh, last but not least is I try to learn something new every day. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It can, it can be anything. Um, I think the little things are often useful um, uh, to, to apply in, in one's life. Uh, so yes, uh, try and uh, uh, learn something new every day, whatever it is, you know, something small that you hear in the radio or watching television or you're with friends and they say something and you don't comment, you just listen. And then you say, oh yeah, that's not bad. And that's already learning one thing. And so you can probably learn more than one thing in a day. Uh, so for me, that's also very, um, very good and very, very good for my health. Um, I think, I think uh, uh, when, when, when I feel good, I feel happy. And, uh, and I think happy is one of the keys to uh, being healthy uh, because you feel good in your body. Um, oh yeah, and so in closing, I would like to, um, uh, mentioned that uh, being a member or since I've become a member of uh, the Alzheimer's Indonesia, um, I become more and more aware of uh, how to keep a healthy brain. And uh, of course, I still have tons to, to, to learn, but uh, here I am with all of you and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from, my, from our uh, speakers later on. So uh, that's part of the learning session, which is also good for, for our brain. Um, so I hope uh, what I just shared can give you some uh, a positive insight for a healthy lifestyle. Um, uh, thank you for listening. And I give the mic back to uh, Kawati. Thank you, everybody. Wow, Kawasi. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, inspiring story. Um, it's, um, it's if I can, if I may recap uh, what you uh, told us was that triggering our mind, triggering our brain to discover new things uh, is feeding our brain nerves. And I think that's the key to make uh, ourselves happy and good. Uh, beautiful. I, I love it uh, because I also played the violin just uh, three years ago. People said, you're crazy. You're so old already. And then you're playing so the, 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 the most difficult uh, music instruments, but I love it. I love it. So thank you so much for sharing your story. And uh, hopefully it will inspire us all, all to 
motivate us to keep our life healthy. Now, I would like to introduce our uh, main speakers, Leon Soon, Soons, Soons, Leon Soons, <laughs> sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly, and Lotte Truin, both PhD candidate from Maastricht Uni University and Alzheimer's Centrum in Limburg. Both are experts in how human can keep their brain healthy. For those who would like to send in their questions, please do this through our chat box. We will discuss the questions after the presentation. Well, without further ado, I would like to give the Zoom floor to Leon and Lotte. Thank you. I will start sharing my screen with you. Let me see. works. Okay, you can see my full screen now. It works. Okay. Great. So first of all, uh, thank you for having us and giving us the opportunity to be presenting to you about dementia lifestyle uh, and prevention. Um, so first of all, a little bit more about us to start off with. So my name is Leon Soens. I am a PhD student at the University of Maastricht and the Alzheimer's Center Limburg since May last year. Uh, and I have a background in health sciences and neuropsychology. Uh, I worked as a psychologist for one year before I started my PhD. And now I am doing research into prevention, lifestyle and brain health. So Lotte, can I give you the word? Yes, thank you, Leon, and thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Lotte. Um, I'm born and raised in Utrecht in the middle of the Netherlands. Um, I'm also currently doing my PhD uh, together with Leon at our department, uh, where I focus on people who have already some cognitive problems and um, I look at their risk factors for developing dementia. I have a background in global health and epidemiology. Um, and I'm also a speech and language pathologist, um, which I worked also in a rehabilitation center before I started um, my PhD. All right, thanks. Uh, and I think together, Lot and I, we are part of the prevention team of the Alzheimer's Center in Limburg. Um, we have a pretty large research team and we have quite a lot of other PhD students joining us that started in the last two years. I think that's also due to the fact that there's um, that the awareness and the interest into dementia prevention has increased in the last years. Um, and together with this whole team of researchers, we try to get a better understanding of how we can delay dementia or influence the risk of getting dementia. Uh, and we also aim to create more awareness about dementia prevention and lifestyle. Um, so today, um, you all, as you all know, we will be talking about prevention and dementia and more specifically about lifestyle and dementia. So what can you do yourself to keep your brain healthy? Um, and we would like to do this in a little bit more of an interactive way. So we would like to challenge you to think along with us um, during our presentation. We will have some statements, ask some questions. And you can just raise your hand if you agree with it, for example. Um, and afterwards, we will always explain, of course, why a particular statement is true or not. Um, so if you feel comfortable turning on your camera so you can join with the, with the questions and the statements, um, please feel free to do so. Um, I cannot see all of you, I guess, um, but we will try to do it a little bit more interactive. Yeah, so I have the first question for you guys. So what do you think? Mm -hmm. um, can anything be done to reduce the risk of dementia? If you think anything can be done, please do a thumbs up. And if no, you can do a thumbs down. I see Monique already with a thumbs up. <laughs> yes, I see a lot of thumbs up. Yeah, so that is correctly. Um, and, and there can be something done to reduce the risk of dementia. So we also asked this in uh, the province where we work in Limburg. Uh, we asked them, can anything be done to reduce the risk of dementia? 
And uh, we have some results here to share with you. Um, more than half of the people who was asked this question said that they didn't think that anything can be done to reduce um, their risk of dementia. 44% um, did think that can be done uh, something to reduce the risk of dementia. And of course, I gave the answer already a little bit away, but um, if you go to the next slide, Leon, hmm? uh, the correct answer is yes, you can do something to reduce your risk of developing dementia. It's very widely uh, right now in the media. You can see some of the headlines here. Um, it's a hot topic right now. Um, and, and certainly with lifestyle interventions, you can do something to reduce your risk of developing dementia. However, unfortunately, there's no method that guarantees that you won't develop dementia. Um, but what we can do is to put effort um, in our lifestyle to reduce our risk of developing dementia. Okay, thank you. Then I will go on to the next statement. Um, so again, what do you guys think? Taking regular exercise can reduce your risk of getting dementia. Thumbs up if you think that's true if the statement is correct yes i see all thumbs up and you are all correct these studies have shown that regular exercise can reduce your risk your risk of developing dementia and why is this well physical activity is good for your brain health it's an excellent way to get rid of stress um, and to improve but also your mental health. Um, it has a direct impact on your brain. Um, so it aids the release of hormones, which are important for the growth and the functioning of your brain cells. It also stimulates the growth of new connections between cells in your brain, which is very important. And it increases your heart rate, which pumps oxygen to your brain. So um, direct, direct effects on your brain, which is beneficial. But the next question that might come up to you is, what is a regular exercise or regular physical activity and what is enough? So physical activity is defined by the World Health Organization as a movement provided by muscles that requires energy. Um, and the World Health Organization recommends that you should do at least 150 to 300 minutes, which is about two and a half to uh, five hours of moderate intensity physical activity each week, or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity physical activity each week, or you could do an equivalent a combination of both. So let me be clear, that does not mean that you have to run a marathon or do these extreme sports each week. Um, moderate physical activity refers to activities that are equivalent in intensity or to brisk walking. So walking fast, as already mentioned um, in our previous story, uh, or riding a bicycle. But also, for example, uh, working in the garden or cleaning the house are examples of moderate physical activity. Your breathing may increase a little bit with these activities, but you are, for example, perfectly fine to talk during these activities. Um, on the other hand, the vigorous physical activity, that refers to activities that produce larger increases in breathing or heart rate. For example, when you go jogging or you are riding a bicycle uphill. Then besides that, it is recommended to do some muscle strengthening activities that involve all of your major muscle groups on at least two days a week, as well as to limit the amount uh, of time spent being sedentary and to replace sedentary time, so sitting time, the time that you are lying down with physical activity of any intensity. Um, then for adults age 65 years and above, it is also recommended to do functional balance and strength training on at least three days a week. So these are, I know these are lots of recommendations, um, but what I think what's good to remember is that physical activity doesn't have to happen in one stretch. So you can break up your activity across the week and some activity is always better than none. So it might be easiest to try to add some activities to your daily routine. 
So for example, when you go shopping, you can increase your activity by parking at the back of the parking lot and walk to shop or use the stairs instead of the elevator or get off the bus one step sooner so that you have to walk a little bit longer. Um, so it's easiest to try to, um, to add these things to your daily routine and make it a habit. Okay, thanks. Okay, <laughs> yes, thank you, Leon. So I have the next um, question for you. Do you think reading reduces the risk of dementia? If you think so, thumbs up, and if not, thumbs down. Yes, all thumbs up. Yes, you are correct. Um, reading reduces the risk of dementia. And what do you think about going to a concert? Is that bad for your brain health? Um, if it is bad, thumbs up. And if not, if you think it's good, thumbs down. Yeah, I see some <laughs> concerning looks, maybe not entirely sure, but I also see a lot of thumbs down. And it is correct, a thumbs down is correct. Um, going to a concert and then therefore listening to music stimulates your brain and is a positive influence on your brain. However, I think an uh, important note to make here is that of course you need to protect your hearing because hearing loss is bad for your brain. Um, so listen to music, but please in a safe manner and protect your hearing where you are at a concert. And what do you think about learning a new language? Does learning a new language lower your risk of dementia? If yes, thumbs up. If no, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Great guys, you are correct. Um, it does. And then the last question. <laughs> do you think having pets increases the risk of dementia? So if you have pets, do you think that increases your risk? Um, if yes, so. If no increase, thumbs down. Yeah, perfect. I see a lot of thumbs downs. Yeah. Uh, so taking care of pets stimulates your brain. You need to think about what they need, how to care for them. Also, of course, maybe if you have a dog, walk them. Um, and therefore it is positive for your brain. Yeah. Yeah, you can do the entire slide. Thank you, Leon. Um, so yeah, all these activities are examples of mental stimulation for the brain. And uh, it is thought that this increases your cognitive reserve. And your cognitive reserve is really the the mind's resistance to brain damage. So the idea is that people develop a reserve of thinking abilities during their lives and that this reserve protects them against losses that can occur through aging and disease. So research shows that factors in a person's life such as educational level, intellectuality, occupation and reading skills are all related to a high cognitive reserve. So it's good for your brain. And, and what I mean by that concretely is someone who reads a lot, for example, can generally tolerate more brain damage before showing any symptoms of dementia, uh, for example, forgetfulness, than someone who reads a little. Uh, so in other words, a high cognitive reserve, so high resilience, um, delays the symptoms of dementia. Unfortunately, a higher cognitive reserve will not prevent the disease altogether. Um, it also has been studied that when um, symptoms do eventually occur in people who have this high cognitive reserve, on average, they deteriorate a little bit faster than someone who shows the first symptoms already in early life. Um, and researchers think this is because your cognitive reserve keeps you good uh, up until a certain threshold. Um, but after that threshold is yeah, overgone, the, the brain has no compensation at all after that threshold. Um, but of course, the positive thing is that the person up until that point has been able to function normally for as long as possible. So the more cognitive uh, reserve you have, the better your brain can compensate for the loss of brain cells in dementia.
And you largely determine yourself how cognitive reserve, how many cognitive reserve you have, how good your cognitive reserve is. So just like you can control physical condition by improving um, your exercising or eating healthy, uh, you can also maintain and improve your, your mental condition. And there are many ways to keep your brain active throughout life. Um, so for example, you can make puzzles, um, play strategy games, um, solve complicated math problems, but also reading, traveling, um, playing a musical instrument and socializing with others really stimulate your, your brain. So what Wati uh, already mentioned that she plays the violin and she learned to play that, that is really good for your brain. Um, so good job, Wati. <laughs> um, so in addition, of course, physical activity is extremely important, just as Leon told us. Uh, it's not only for your heart important, but also for your blood vessels, uh, for your brain, sorry. Um, and uh, another thing that's really good for your brain is language. So language plays an important role too. Learning another language helps to keep your brain in good shape. And um, bilingualism has a positive influence on the laying symptoms of dementia. And this is because language is also one of these factors that contributes to that higher cognitive reserve. So just like with your physical fitness, you also need to maintain your mental fitness. And the best medicine for staying mentally fit for as long as possible is to stay intellectually, socially, and physically active. Um, and it is never too late to start with this. I have another question for you. Um, what do you think? From what age are most people unable to learn a new language? Is it A, 65 years, B, 85 years, or C, none of the above? And maybe you can use the chat function um, to, to type in your answer. I'll give you a minute to think about it and decide what you think. I think I see unanimously C. And that is really good because the correct answer is also C. Leon, can you maybe? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the correct answer is C and our brain adapts really until a very old age. So um, this also includes acquiring new language skills uh, and we can keep challenging our brains and really remember that we are never too old to learn. Okay, thank you. And then I will give you the next statement. Um, a healthy diet can influence your brain health and dementia risk. So thumbs up if you think that's correct and thumbs down if you think this is not correct. So does a healthy diet, can it influence your dementia risk? I see all thumbs up. Very good. It is indeed um, correct. Um, there is some evidence that eating a Mediterranean, Mediterranean style diet can reduce the risk of developing problems with memory and thinking and getting some forms of dementia. Um, the Mediterranean diet is a way of eating that's based on the traditional cuisines of Greece, Italy, and the other countries that border the Mediterranean Sea. And traditionally, the diet is high in fruits, in vegetables, in nuts, and whole grains. Um, they replace butter with healthy fats like olive oil, and they eat fatty fish at least twice a week and they limit red meat. So these are the, the main things that are characteristic of this Mediterranean diet. Um, and of course, there, is, there are many explanations why this specific diet is good for your brain. Um, some of them is, for example, that the high levels of the antioxidants from the intake of fruits and vegetables may help to protect uh, again, some of the damage to brain cells, which is associated with Alzheimer's disease. Um, this diet is also linked to the lower levels of cholesterol, which is associated with memory and thinking problems. Um, but of course, there are many, many different diets to use and many different diets um, that, are, um, that are examined also in, into research. 
Um, but we, what we see from now is that the, this Mediterranean diet um, has the most um, positive results in the research. So now, then another uh, statement that's very good to remember, what's good for your heart is good for your brain. It seems that most people know which things are bad for your heart. So for example, a high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol levels, smoking, obesity are all things that are bad for your heart. But what a lot of people don't know is what's bad for your heart is also bad for your brain. So to rephrase it a little bit more positive, what's good for your heart is also good for your brain. So they really go hand in hand as in the picture here. Um, so having better control of high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels, reducing your intake of salt and excessive alcohol use uh, and stop smoking all help to maintain a healthy brain and reduce your risk of getting dementia. And as already mentioned, but it's never, it can never mention uh, enough, it's never too late to adapt healthier lifestyle choices. Yes, I think the floor is yours. Oh, really? <laughs> um, okay, okay, so the question is there are currently or the statement is there are currently more than 50 million people with dementia worldwide um what are most cases due to what do you think uh, genetics modifiable risk factors such as lifestyle or both play an equally important role please use the chat again um, to fill in your answer so what are most cases due to I see a lot of B and C. I'm waiting a few more seconds for you to put in your answer. C, B. Okay, so I think it is a tie between B and C. Um, well, Leon, yeah, the, the correct <laughs> answer <laughs> is B. Um, so modifiable risk factors such as lifestyle um, is the most important cause for, for dementia. So uh, to return to the question, uh, what are risk factors for dementia right now? Um, well, there are some risk factors that we cannot influence ourselves, for example, age. Um, so with older age, your risk for dementia increases, sex, educational attainment, um, the brain damage that you maybe have acquired during your, your lifetime, um, and genetics. Um, an important note to make here is that genetics is only... Um, um, only a few percent of dementia cases is due to genetics. So that's really important to remember. But there are also, uh, if you go to the next slide, Leon, yeah, there are also risk factors that we can influence ourselves. So modifiable risk factors. Um, and I've put them here on this slide for you, um, uh, an, an overview. So the first one is cognitive, cognitive activity. So what I just talked about, engage in cognitively stimulating activities that is really good for your brain. The second one is physical activity. So try to be physically active throughout your day, throughout your week, um, and this decreases your risk for dementia. The third one is a healthy diet. So try to eat healthily. The Mediterranean diet is maybe a good um, point to start um, to have some, some inspiration from that diet. The fourth one is depression. So depression is actually linked with an increased risk of dementia. So try to work on your mood if possible, maybe uh, together with a psychologist or a doctor. The fifth one is smoking. Smoking is bad for your brain. So quit smoking if it's, eh, if it's in your um, control. The sixth one is diabetes. So managing your diabetes status is very important. The seventh one is alcohol intake. So drink alcohol in moderation. And the next one is hypertension. Um, so hypertension is an important risk factor. So lower your blood pressure if it is too high. And this also is for cholesterol. Um, so lower your cholesterol if needed. The tenth one is obesity, which is a very important risk factor. So maintain a healthy weight. 
And the last two ones are coronary heart disease and chronic kidney disease. These two diseases are also linked with an increased risk of dementia. Okay, thank you, Lotte. And then I have the next follow-up question for you, um, which relates to um, the previous slides. So if everyone will live as healthy as possible, how many percent of the dementia cases could be prevented? Is that 20%, 40% or 60%? You can take a guess in the chat. Mm -hmm. I see B and I see C also a lot. Yeah. I think it's the, the most answers are B or C. Um, and it's nice to see that you are so optimistic about this, uh, this question. The right answer is B. Um, so we know that the risk of getting dementia is for 40% explained by lifestyle factors, such as physical activity or high blood pressure. So this means, in other words, that 40% of the risk of getting dementia can be influenced by modifying risk factors over the life course. Um, good to note is that there's also still 60% unknown. And of course, this 40% refers to the ideal situation that everyone would live healthy and we would never accomplish that. But this percentage tells us that we can do something about our risk of getting dementia. And that's also why big international organizations like the World Health Organization spread the word that we need to be ambitious about dementia prevention. I think that's, that's the most important part about it. So our main take home messages would be take care of your heart because what's good for your heart is good for your brain. Take regular exercise, eat healthy and stay curious. And staying curious and staying active, there are multiple ways to do that. So is there something that you always wanted to try someday but you didn't do it yet? I would say go for it, go do it. Um, doing and learning new things is excellent for your brain. Uh, so think about doing a painting course, going to the museum, uh, or going to a concert, learn another language, uh, follow a cooking class, do some volunteer work, you name it, whatever it feels right for you. And I think that's where we want to end our presentation. Uh, so thank you for your attention. And of course, there is enough room for questions. Thank you so much, uh, Leon and Lotte. Uh, this is a very interesting um, knowledge that you have shared with us. And I am sure there are many, many questions. I've, I've written down so many things, but I want to give the floor to uh, there is a Mbaputri in Indonesia, Ayu Maulida, uh, who might want to pose a question. Um, are you there, Mba Ayu Maulida? Mm. I have a quick question, if I may. Oh, yes, yes. Hi, I'm Lily from Indonesia and I'm Wasi's sister. Hi. Nice, the diaspora yeah. from Indonesia. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, because none of the activities mentioned working, like as in working. You know, working requires a lot of thinking and stuff and reading and strategizing, you know, but none of the activities mentioned working. I know that working creates stresses sometimes, but um, I was just wondering why it's not being mentioned. Thank you. Yeah, Nini, I think it's a good thing that you mentioned it because, of course, working when it's cognitively active work, it's also really good for your brain. 
um, strategic thinking, but also a lot of reading, maybe um, doing, um, being socially um, uh, active with colleagues and stuff. Um, uh, so that's really all really good for your brain. So if your job is much like that, it's it's also good for your cognitive um, yeah, abilities. Thank you. Thank you guys for this session. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ibuni, for your question. Uh, I think I see um, Manika raising her hand. Yeah, I have also a question uh, to uh, Leon and also Lotte. And I'm thinking about uh, when a person is already, uh, for example, it's already in the first, uh, in the early stage of dementia, and is it okay to add this uh, to give an advice and new things to do? Because you said that the learn new things is also good for mm -hmm. you, but the, when uh, the person uh, is already in the early stage of dementia, is it okay? Yeah, I think uh, that's the statement. It's never too too late uh, to do so. Um, of course, it can help to uh, prevent to maybe slow down um, the the further process a little bit to stay active and build other connections in your brain. Um, I, so that's what I would say. I don't know a lot because you may be more into the subjective and early dementia stage if you have some additions on that. Yeah, Leon, I, I completely agree with you. Um, like we said, it's never too late to learn. Um, also for people in early stages of dementia, currently in my project, I'm looking into risk factors also for progressing to dementia for people who already have some cognitive problems. And we're also looking if um, uh, um, uh, cognitively stimulating activities or physical activity or a healthy diet um, do uh, delay uh, onset of like dementia itself. Um, so it's it's in the works. So we're still looking into it, but I would say it's never too late to learn. Thank you. Uh, I have some um, hand raised. Uh, as Judah, uh, as Judah. Yes. Good and morning. Also Imelda, but good morning. Good morning. Please I just raise your uh, question. Yes, I have a several questions here, if I may first. Um, this is a terms definition. You mentioned earlier uh, about reducing and even preventing dementia. Is it those terms are, um, does it mean it's really preventing and um, reducing or is it the delay of dementia? This is first questions. Mm -hmm. uh, second question, one of the uh, in the risk factor what about sleep disorder mm -hmm. oh, third question uh, third question uh, you mentioned activities is it in, in daily and in routine it was in one stretch so i understood this is more um more advantage if we have a routine daily activity instead of one run uh, 20 kilometers in one in, in a day is it correct so and the fourth question i have sorry for these many questions but i wrote down everything uh, languages you see that learning languages uh, could lead to a delay of dementia so uh, that means is one additional language would delay how many years of dementia is it any research on that. So for example, if we had start learning, I don't know, Portuguese at the age of 60, that it would delay five years, 10 years, one year, two years. So and also in, in um, uh, to along with that question, what does your definition of learning languages? Is it only to say to be able to say hello? Or is it to be able, until which level would that have an impact? So thank you. Okay, Leon and Lotte, uh, there's a lot of uh, questions. Um, did you capture it? Uh, yes, maybe okay. I will ask for a recap um, uh, in, in when we answer it, but uh, the majority of it I captured. And maybe to start off with um, uh, the question about languages, I think what is really important there is that it's, a manner to um, um, yeah 
to challenge your brain. So to um, to learn something new, to to change the things that you already know. Um, so to really challenge your brain into um, yeah learning something new, and that is what you do with of course a new language. You learn new words. You learn to conversate, maybe maybe to write. So that are all ways to to challenge your brain in a good way. Um, and in terms of your question, um, it, for how long then it delays uh, your dementia onset? So when the symptoms start of dementia, I think that there's no really one answer uh, to that. I don't know if you know it exactly, Leon, but um, I think for everyone it's different, and um, um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's no, there's no quick answer to to that question. I think they're doing research to it, but I don't know any results already. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, my my internet connection was a little bit unstable for uh, for some seconds, um, but I think you you uh, tackled the first the last question about the language, right, Lotte? Yeah. Um, and I think um, well, very very good questions. Also, the the first one about is it reducing, is it preventing dementia? What are we talking about? I think uh, we prefer to talk about reducing the risk or delaying it because you cannot really say that you can prevent it with a good lifestyle. It's not that when you are having when you're having a good lifestyle, it's a guarantee that you will not develop dementia, but it can lower your risk. So we prefer to uh, speak about it in that way, uh, delaying or lowering the risk of getting dementia. Um, about the thing uh, with the sleeping disorder, it's a very, uh, very interesting question because there is um, the last couple of years more and more research uh, about it that sleeping disorders have um, or increase your risk of getting uh, dementia. Um, I think it was also in the, we didn't mention it, but it is in the, in the 40% of modifiable risk factors. Um, sleep um, is also one of, the, one of the factors, although I'm not really sure. But in my research, we are now doing a, a large intervention study where we um, ask people to um, do uh, an intervention, lifestyle intervention for two years, which where they can work on several several um, lifestyle factors, and sleep is absolutely one of them that we are handling. So it's indeed a very important one um, to keep in mind. But there's um, because it's a recently um, because it's all only um, examined the, in the last years there is not um, very concrete, it is less concrete evidence about how the how and what does uh, sleep disorders in the risk of getting dementia. Um, and if I remember correct, correctly, the third question was about the activities and whether it has more advantage if you do uh, do it in a routine so you do multiple little little things on each day or each week or you do uh, you run 10 kilometers in once um i think it's it, it doesn't matter the thing the things you do if you do it in one stretch or you do you don't do it in one stretch but i think uh what i wanted to point out is that it's easiest for most people if you don't do it already to incorporate it into your daily routine in smaller steps. So it's it's often more harder to say, okay, you have to run 10 kilometers next week than saying, take small steps and uh, incorporate it into your, your daily routine. If that answers your questions. Yes, thank you. Just one remark regarding the language. I think I could recall reading a research that learning one language could delay your dementia up to five years but this is something uh i don't i have to search and can share it with you if you found it again yeah that would be great yeah um i'm i've not read this this research i think but um yeah there, there it's a hot topic also so really uh, they're really looking into it with research right now also how languages and learning languages have an influence on your cognitive abilities and, and also a language is, is regardless which language, because most of Indonesian tends to learn foreign language. It is also, uh, I think it's proven if you learned Bahasa Jawa or something, any other traditional language, it is considered to be one foreign language. Yeah, 
So that's regardless which language we are learning. Yeah, I would say so. The most important thing from learning languages is that you challenge your brain. So you really um, start to, to um, yeah, exercise it in a way. So how you do it with physical activity, you exercise your, your muscle, you do this with your brain through challenging it with um, cognitive activity. So also learning a language. Um, so, and also to follow up on your question, how much you should do and, and if it, it should only be like that you know how to say hello or um, have a conversation. I think the point is to challenge your brain and in what extent is not really that important, I would say what is known right now, but that you keep challenging your brain and your cognitive reserve. Super inter interesting because um, there, I know that there are many local languages in Indonesia that really triggers your mind because they have many accents, different kind of articulation. I think that uh, also stimulates the brain of uh, the connection between brain and speech. Thank you, Mr. S. Judah. For yes, your... because it's really uh, Indonesian really tends to learn foreign language, English and whatever. And this is not, not really not true. Yeah, thank you. Um, Imelda, uh, her, her hand has been up for a long time. Uh, please uh, pose your question. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I think uh, I just wonder about the language, yeah, because my mom is she's like 75. And she's very active. She learns uh, English, uh, but not not too good. And then the, she speaks Mandarin. She speaks Javanese. She speaks Indonesian. And she's very active, like walking everywhere, mm, not using too much car. Uh, but she's a bit uh, chubby, a bit overweight. And then now she's having dementia. So I, I wonder, yeah, up, uh, maybe the overweight or diabetes is have a greater percentage than the active lifestyle and learning language. But, but I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's a very, very good question. And that's also the thing we would like to point out um, that it's not a guarantee if you are doing um, some things uh, very well and you're working on that um, but some things are also um, less in your control there's also 60% unknown um, so we don't know everything yet that's also very uh, very good to know that there can also be other factors that we don't know yet which have a big influence on uh, the risk of getting dementia um, they do there is some research into um, which is which is more important than the other one, but it's also very difficult to disentangle the different factors because they interrelate so much. For example, um, very uh, a lot of vascular factors and having a high uh, cholesterol and a high um, uh, blood pressure and diabetes, they all interrelate so much that it's difficult to disentangle them. Um, really into research and look what what, what uh, is more important than the other one. And I think it also really depends um, per person. It's very in individual. And then like, another thing, uh, I saw uh, information about the dementia already starting 15 to 20 years earlier before the symptoms came out. Is it correct? So I mean, like, because my Many of my auntie and uncles, they have dementia. The grandma also has, now my mom. So I'm getting worried now. <laughs> yeah, so you mean like that um, uh, they stay at 15 to 20% before dementia starts? There are already, it is already there, like, but you don't notice. Yeah, I think in our research group, we are not really into, into that. So I'm not, I don't have the specifics on that. I know that um, before, the symptoms of dementia occur, um, occur there are some things go, going on in your brain and there is lots of research into detecting the early changes for example in your brain so um, that you can diagnose it at an earlier stage um, but I don't have more specifics on that because it's not our research area that we dive into okay thank you miss 
Thank you so much, Jamila, for your questions. Maybe uh, this is also an inspiration for uh, the organization to maybe organize another session on uh, that uh, part. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Kawasi, uh, the next one was coming. I have to, uh, hopefully, hopefully I didn't forget anybody, but I think Kawasi was uh, the next one. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Kawasi. Um, my question uh, concerns uh, my habits uh, personally. Um, I know that, um, and I know that uh, we need to uh, sleep a certain hour, um, especially for those who uh, have reached uh, over 60 years old. Um, uh, I am a very late person. Um, my brain sort of works um, when it's like people's, I mean, my evening starts like at nine, 10 o'clock. Um, now, my question is, how does that impact my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, brain working? Um, I have been uh, sleeping uh, maybe five hours a day, something like that. Now, in the long, uh, in the long term, would that uh, affect me? I'm, I'm over 60 now, um, but I, I, I feel okay when I wake up, I don't feel like I'm tired. I, I just do my thing. It's like I have enough rest. Um, so can you give a little bit of uh, clarification on that? Is that a, a bad habit of mine? Should I change it now and try to sleep more? Um, and I don't take naps too. Um, I mean, my day is like filled, um, but maybe that's the way I am. But I, I want to make sure that that's not a bad thing uh, to uh, continue on, you know, in the years to come. Thank you. Yeah, so I think for, for sleeping habits, it's really a, um, a risk factor that is looked into in the past couple of years. So there's not a lot of research already done on, on this topic. Um, and I know that um, for like an adult, for a healthy adult, they um, recommend between six to eight um, hours of sleep per day. Um, so I think if you are in that range, that would be that would be great, but um, I think it's also personal for people. But to be honest, I don't know very much on this specific topic. Um, so I, I couldn't say if you should change your habit right now or not, um, because it's, it's, it's a fairly new risk factor that is looked into. Um, so there's also a lot of unknown still. Okay. Leon, I don't know if you have something to add to that. No, no I think I, I, Oh, sorry, Leon, yeah, sorry. No, I think I, what Lotte is saying is um, is correct, and I think it's hard to um, um, to say what to do or not to do in this particular case because it's also very personal. I think this uh, the the sleep research is also more into sleep hygiene. Um, so uh, if you feel you, you're you're saying that when you wake up you feel refreshed and you're you know you you're, you're ready to to, to do some things during the day and it's dif it's different when you um, really are sleep deprived so you have the feeling that you don't sleep enough you don't have enough energy to do stuff during the day I think it's it, it's really more about about that and if you're feeling like that then it should be a re could be a reason to look into that and see uh, how to change that. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Kawasi, for your question. Uh, next, I would like to give the, the word to Lesti Atmojo. Yes, it's me. Good morning. Uh, oh, I have a you. question. Uh, people who have a big stress in their life uh, for example, working hard or because there are limited capacity for doing their job and or people with mental problems. Uh, these people have more chances for cardiovascular problems uh, as diabetes mellitus, hypertension, stroke and other things. Uh, how can you guide these people? It is not easy. This is my question. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, Leslie, I think you have a, a fair point there. It's not easy also with, with mood, with depression, we touched upon that, um, but also with stress, it's not easy to, to manage that. Um, and I think best would be to uh, seek help from a, a health professional who can maybe guide you with that or to discuss it with family members and to look for the things that you 
feel like you um, that relax you and, and can tackle your stress a little bit. But I would definitely recommend to to seek help from a health professional. Yes. OK, thank you. Yes, I agree about that. You have to be aware about that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Estia. Um, I still see a hand of a S. Judah. Yes, yes. just something uh, regarding that uh, sleep disorder. It is completely correct. This is not the quantity of how many hours you sleep, but the quality of how you sleep is much more important. And uh, changing one's uh, sleeping habit is not very useful because we are individuals. Some people like to sleep until late in the afternoon. Some people like to sleep early. This is very individual. This is, depends on the quality of how we sleep. This is uh, uh, very uh, what I've known so far. So, but I have another question regarding traveling. Uh, traveling is a, not everyone is very fortunate to travel. This is a cost factor. Uh, if once it's not possible to travel, what would be the other option to compensate this? Uh, yeah, this positive factor in delaying dementia. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, of course, traveling is expensive and it's not something that you can do anytime uh, when you want it. Um, but it's it's you must see it as one of, of the ways to engage in cognitively um, stimulating activities. So it's not that solely traveling is a cognitively stimulating activities and the rest is um, is, is worse or something. Um, but for traveling, if you want to maybe, um, yeah, you can maybe do that in your own neighborhood to explore new, new parts of your city, maybe where you live, um, to have a walk in a, in a different area that you have not been to. It's, it's um, about the new experience, the new uh, stimuli that you come across when you travel. So you can also really uh, try to find that in your own area. You, you don't have to go overseas to, to have new experiences, but um, maybe you go for a walk in another area and you uh, see something, you have a little chat with someone that's also cognitively stimulating. So um, yeah, you can use that as an activity for your, for your brain health. Yeah, thank you. This is a very important uh, information because I think my understanding is Indonesian traveling in Indonesia means traveling abroad or far, far, far away. Yeah, it doesn't have to be far away. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think the key is to uh, discover new things. And I think even in our garden, we can discover so many things that we maybe not know yet. I think uh, Ibu Lesti Atmojo raised her hand again. No, so sorry. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, that, that. okay. I, I see Mary Adriana. Good morning. I would like to ask you about the vascular dementia. Yeah, because uh, my husband, uh, after he has uh, the stroke, and then I think he has got the dementia, but it's not in the what is that? The state is maybe still on the onset, maybe, yeah, onset. But now I would like to ask you how to give the, how to delay, yeah? You said to, to delay the, the fast, not, not the fast, the speed, yeah? The speed of the dementia, because now if uh, he is, he, is uh, he has a difficulty in writing, yeah? So when I ask him to exercise, to write, it's difficult for him. And then also he has a difficulty in spelling. So maybe that's why he doesn't want to do it because maybe after a while he will feel boring. He, he doesn't know how to write a word because he, it's difficult for him to spell the word. And then also if I ask him to exercise, it's rather difficult because he cannot uh, move his right hand very well it's stiff yeah it's stiff so it's rather difficult for him to walk also so what uh, exercise should i give him yeah it's a very good question and thank you thank you for that question um mm -hmm. i think it's important to just 
search together, look together to the things that um, that he likes and that he likes to do and um, try to incorporate some healthy lifestyle into that. So it doesn't have to be exercising in a way that, you know, doing some very heavy activities. Um, if he likes to do some things around the house or go for a walk or it can be very broad. So think, I would say, think broad and try to be a little bit creative um, in the things that he always likes like to do um, or maybe just try some new things things that uh, you haven't done before or haven't tried before. And maybe it's a very nice experience now um, to do so. Um, so that would be my, um, my main advice for now. I don't know if Lotta has something to add to that. No, Leon, I think you covered that very well. Um, look what your husband can do and see what the opportunities are there um, and focus on that, I would say, yeah. Yeah, now he's doing gardening uh, a little in the morning. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. doing gardening, and then that's a great example. Yeah, yeah. he's walking, walking around the house. Yeah, doing the yeah, doing the household things a little, yeah. something like that. Uh, maybe yeah. watching television, yeah, something like that. Just, just doing like this. Is it enough? Yeah, I think that's a perfect example that it doesn't have to be very complex all the time. You know, th these are also kind of activities you don't think about it. You think it's just uh, just something you do, but it requires some cognitive activity as well to do gardening or to, you know, walking yeah. around the house. It is physical activity. So um, you're not very conscious about it, but it really requires your, yeah. uh, your brain. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, luckily he is so patient. Yeah, he is so patient yeah. and he is not the uh, what is that? Yeah, if he's uh, yeah, patient and he is not uh, really to get stressed. Yeah, it's it's yeah. lucky. Yeah. So yeah. I just doing a little things. Is it enough? Yeah, because I want to delay, yeah, because I think it's better to delay, yeah. 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 Don't, don't delay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ibu Mary. Uh, you guys are lucky to have each other. Uh, your husband is so lucky to have you, such a positive and inspiring uh, woman. Thank you. Um, Ibu Nimi is raising her hand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, um, you know, I, I have regular medical checkup every year for everything else going on. Um, is there a, a like a yearly check for dementia? Like, can you go to a doctor and ask to be diagnosed if you have some sort of a dementia um, symptoms or, or something? Thank you. Oh, Leon, I'm looking at you. I don't know about this question, to be honest. No, I, I'm, I, I think like the, the, the regular checkup uh, you have, for example, with your general practitioner or something, um, most of the things that are checked, they relate to, you know, the risk factors of dementia. So more like the, the lifestyle factors and the blood pressure and the cholesterol levels. I think these are all, they are already incorporated into the, um, um, the regular checkup. Um, I don't think it is there yet, but I'm also not not entirely sure. Um, we know uh, I know that um, uh, in our department we are also working about um, better um, communication and stuff with the general practitioners so that they are aware of what what are the things we have to look for, what are red flags, um, like these kind of things. We are working on that and having attention uh, towards that. So, but if, um, it, uh, I mean, touch wood, but if I feel like I'm becoming much more forgetful or, or whatever it is, right, I'm then advised to see a neurologist or a brain doctor or wh who do I have to see? Just yeah, but because... I think always the first, the first step is to, to go to the general uh, practitioner and then he will guide you um, the right way and that can be a memory clinic in a hospital um so what you're saying but i think the first step is always the um the gp the general practitioner okay thank you if, if you come across um a, a check 
of some sort, would you let me know through whoever can um, can can give me information? Okay. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Well. Thank you. Please write that down, like Leon and Lotte. <laughs> You're the experts. Maybe we can. Uh give an information sheet. There is a question uh, on the chat box uh, from East Ning. Many cases of dementia afflict people in urban or rural areas. Do you have a answer to that? Mm, whether there's a difference between people in urban and um, rural yeah. areas. Um, I'm not really sure. I, I think I know that there is a, there is lots of research into like the low, middle, high income countries. So it is more into the low and middle income countries. Um, there is there are more dementia cases compared to the high income countries. Um, that's what I know, um, but I'm not sure about the rural or urban areas and if there is if there is evidence that there is a difference um, between them. I see a lot also. No, no, uh, I think what you said, Leon, that in the low and middle income countries, the, the dementia rates are increasing because also people are, are getting older over there. Um, but how it is in rural areas compared to maybe cities or urban, urban um, um, areas, I, I'm not sure. I can imagine that it maybe has to do with, with risk factors that are more prominent in certain populations. So maybe populations in the in the rural um, areas, but I have no uh, concrete answer. No. I think that's an interesting field of research, uh, although I think it's also very locally um, adaptable, uh, locally, um, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, now I don't see any hand raised anymore and there's no question in the chat box. I'm looking at Monique um, uh, because earlier on you you posted uh, me a message about uh, yeah hi Mati hi Monique please yeah thank you so much Mati for helping us uh, to be a moderator of the our session of today and thank you also Leon and also Lotta for uh, your beautiful presentation and also for the participants of today's. Two thoughts are for you all because uh, now we have a very uh, interactive discussion and also interactive presentation. Nice to see you all. And uh, I got uh, uh, WhatsApp from uh, Indonesia that uh, today we have a guest and uh, she is an Indonesian beauty pigeon, Indonesian beauty pigeon. Uh, I got the name, it is Ayu Maulida. Maybe uh, Ayu, uh, you want to uh, open your camera and maybe you want to give a short uh, one minute, maybe an opinion about your lifestyle. Uh, Ayu Maulida. Are you still here? I see still uh, the name, but uh, maybe you can open your uh, camera. Okay, if uh, I think it's uh, maybe a problem or what, but uh, no worry. Thank you so much, all of participants of uh, today's uh, seminar or online session. I have uh, still a uh, one uh, information is about the next program of uh, Alzheimer Indonesia Netherlands. I want to share something now. Uh, Wait, uh, give me a second. Uh, sorry. Wait a minute, give me a second. I need to open first. Yes. This is the next agenda of uh, Alzheimer Indonesia, Netherlands. 
So in 26th of March, 2022, we have the online series, the fort, uh, 41th online series. It's, the theme is about the dementia and sexuality. It's a really nice uh, topic. Maybe it's uh, still taboo in Indonesia, but we will discuss about this. And the speaker is Franz Hoogeveen from the Netherlands. And Alzheimer Indonesia Netherland open for volunteering for people who live in the Netherland please uh, if you have uh, uh, do you want in more information or if you want to join uh, us uh, we open for volunteering and for information related to Alzheimer Indonesia Netherland activities please follow our social media uh, via Facebook uh, YouTube uh, Instagram Twitter and or you can also contact us via email. Yeah, and, uh, oh yeah, I forgot. At the beginning of our session, we have already, uh, we have already took a group photo, but I saw uh, many participants came later. So maybe uh, now we can also, we can uh, again, once more again, uh, take a group photo. Is it okay if you uh, open your camera, please? And then we will once more uh, take a, a photo. Uh, we have uh, two pages. Uh, I will start now for the first page. Give the big smile of you. One, two, three. And now is uh, the second page. One, two, three. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, wait a minute, uh, maybe I forgot something. Uh, no, I think uh, now it's already 11.32. We are already finished. Thank you so much, Leon and Lotte. Oh yeah, if uh, people want to ask about the uh, uh, dementia lifestyle and also reducing the the risk of dementia. If you have a still question, uh, don't hesitate to uh, uh, send an email to us, uh, to Alzheimer uh, Indonesia Netherlands via our uh, email address or just uh, text me via the WhatsApp group or just maybe Leon Suns and uh, Lotte Trin can also uh, write the email in the chat box then people can a direct contact you. Sure, we will do that. Yes, uh, we will see in a moment that the uh, Leon and Lotta, yeah, here is the uh, email. Leon. Yeah, great. Oh, and there is a question are the slides going to be shared later? Is it okay to share uh, the presentation, Leon? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Sure. Yes, you yeah. can also share the presentation later. Thank you so much, Leon and Lotta, and also what DJ Aaron for the moderate our online session of today. Thank you, Amalia. Oh, okay. And also Wasi, thank you so much uh, for your sharing about your healthy lifestyle and for all the participants from um, Germany, Indonesia, and so on. And I will uh, close this uh, session with a video. Bye. 
Sudah mulai lupa, bingung tidak fokus, marah-marah curiga. 